changing your skiing doesn't happen overnight. I really do hope these drills help change your ski IQ, bump it up greater than 115 and move into that carved cadet category because once you start arcing and carving turns, you're never gonna wanna stop. Our lesson today is designed for the parallel perfecter skier. Those who have a ski IQ of about 100 to 115. And the goal of this lesson is to get you into the carving cadet category with a skier IQ of greater than 115. Some influential metrics that will help you move from parallel perfecter to carving cadet are the pressure smoothness, turn shape, early edging, and start of turn and end of turn balance. So the drills that we're gonna work on today are gonna help you improve all these different metrics. The difference between skidded turns and carving turns are almost like the difference between a regular car and a sports car. When you go into a carving turn, it's gonna feel like you're driving a Porsche or a Ferrari around the corner. You're gonna find that when you start carving, you're gonna have a little more grip, a little more glide, and a lot more control to your turns. So today we're gonna focus on three drills that are gonna get you from parallel perfecter to carving cadet. So follow along with me, and I really hope you enjoy the lesson. So we're gonna jump into our first exercise now. And we've had a look at skiers in the 100 to 115 range. And some of the common movement patterns is that they're making some pretty strong and aggressive, almost uh, erratic movements with the outside ski, which then causes them to pivot and twist the ski very quickly into the fall line, resulting in those Z-shaped or very shallow turn shape. So something that we're gonna work on right now is slowing down the movements of the outside leg so that we can slow down the top of the turn and deliver pressure to the outside ski early. I'm gonna share with you a tactic or an external cue that's gonna help you along with this. And as we make our turns, we're going to count and we're gonna see if we can make our extension movement last all the way until four. So we're gonna count one, two, three, four. And at four is when our extension should be complete, not before that. So here we go. And I'm gonna extend my right leg here. One, two, three, four, and then finish. Left, one, two, three, four. Right, one, two, three, four. I could go even slower. And one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And as you can see, when my extension is done, I'm about halfway through my turn. So our goal with this counting is to make as smooth and as controlled movements as possible. Something you can think about is like an accelerator on your car, where you don't want to just hit the pedal to the metal, but a nice controlled acceleration, that same sort of push feeling but very controlled and deliberate versus erratic and quick movements. And something that you might want to start on is some easy blue terrain. Just something that you don't pick up too much speed on and you can really focus on these slow controlled movements. So as you start to get the hang of it and your metrics go up, don't be afraid to start taking it into a little more steeper terrain uh, maybe a, a, just a blue run with a little bit more pitch or even try going a little bit faster and seeing if you can still be smooth um, even though your speed has picked up a little bit or the pitch has changed. So we've just focused on slowing down the extension of our outside, new outside leg. Now to build on that and really start to work on carving, we have to start to be more deliberate about engaging the edge of our new outside ski. And one of the ways that we do this is by toppling and using the lower joints in our body, our ankles, our feet, our ankles, 
shins and knees to get this movement going. So something you can think about just standing here is that I'm gonna imagine there's a piece of gum on my downhill ski and I'm gonna slowly try to pull my foot off of that piece of gum. And watch what happens when I did that. My body started to move downhill and the ski started to slide. So I toppled down the hill. Now, we're gonna try to do this in a side slip and do a few little edge checks as we're doing it. And we really want the activity to come out of the ankles and the feet and the lower legs. So as I go down, I'm gonna imagine that I'm dropping my boots closer to the snow as I do a few edge checks and then pulling them away from the snow as I slip. So here I am, I'm gonna slip. I'm gonna pull my boots away from the snow, slip, move them closer, slip, move them closer for a check. And the activity is all coming out of my lower legs. A couple little checks. And now we'll take this into a turn. So before we take this fully into a turn, we're gonna do a series of garlands where we're just gonna take that movement that we've done right up there with these side slips and we're gonna apply them into garlands. And we're doing garlands because doing a complete turn can be really intimidating right off the get-go. So we're just gonna kinda of cheat into the fall line and then fade right back out again. And what we're looking for is the ski to track cleanly into the fall line and the tail of my ski is gonna follow the tip of my skis. It's not gonna twist or diverge. So I'm just looking for a really shallow approach into the fall line. Here we go. So as I do these garlands, I'm just trying to roll and get the ski to move down the hill and engage a little bit and feel a little grip. What I'm not trying to do is this, where I'm twisting that ski into the fall line. I really want the ski to move forward, almost diagonally down the hill. And I'm really driving this with my feet, my ankles, my shins, and my knees. So our goal here really is to take the movement that we were training with the side slip through the feet, the ankles, and the knees, and start to put them into the turn. And ultimately what I'm trying to do here is get the ski to move down the hill with a little bit of grip starting to happen. So that ideally, as we start to connect and link these, we're gonna get some traction, a little bit of grip at the top of the turn as we shape and start drawing those C and S shaped turns versus those Z and shallow shaped turns. So we've just finished building those good strong feet, ankle and knee movements with those side slips and the garlands. Now it's time to start working that into a turn a little bit. And we're gonna start with a simple exercise of railroad tracks. And our goal here is to really just keep the skis running as cleanly and smoothly as possible, leaving two clean tracks in the snow, like a train, and really working our feet, our ankles, and our knees. So, here we go. Now I'm just focusing on really rolling my feet, ankles, and knees as clean as possible. It's important to do this exercise on a really, really mellow piece of terrain. So that's a fun little exercise to start transitioning these really nice movements of the feet, ankles, and knees into our regular turns. And it's really important to take this exercise into some very, very mellow terrain as you'll build up speed really quickly. And once you start to feel comfortable and you can leave some nice clean tracks in the snow, start working this into some more dynamic turns. Just as a reminder, the movements that we make to apply pressure to the front and to the tails of our skis 
they're very controlled, just like the rest of the movements that we make in skiing, that they're not big ranges of, of movement, but they're small and controlled along the length of my arch. As I rock forward onto my foot, I can feel the pressure increase underneath the balls of my foot, and I can actually feel some, some force driving into the ski. And now as I rock back onto the back of my arch, Right? I can feel that pressure there alleviate and the pressure build right on that sweet spot in the back of my arch. So we're going to go into the falling leaf drill, which is just going to give us an opportunity to feel and to train this fore and aft movement as well as hone in the movement so that it's along the length of our arch and not into these big extreme movements. So here we go. I'm going to start by doing a forward falling leaf and now I'm going to pull the skis back and as I pull them back I can feel the pressure increase on the cuff and back up. Now I can feel it on the back of my arch as I swoop backwards and I'm going to drive forwards, feel the pressure on the back of my foot and I'm going to do this several times until I can start really honing in and feeling the ski react underneath me. So with this drill, we're really just kind of swooping back and forth across the hill, kind of like a leaf falling off a tree, hence it's called falling leaf. And really what we're emphasizing here is a movement forward to get the ski going down the hill and then rocking back onto the back of our arch and then starting rocking back onto our arch to start the reverse swoop and then reversing it back so that we're swooping onto the front of the foot. So to increase the challenge a little bit further, we've just done this falling leaf drill. Now we're gonna go into a series of W's, T-bars, fish hooks. People have all sorts of different names for them. Feel free to name it however you want. But we're basically gonna add a direction change into our falling leaf. So it's gonna look like this. Come up. And down. And come up. And down. And as I do this, I'm really still working my arch. Forward, rocking to the back. Back, rocking forward. Forward, rocking back. Back, rocking forward. And as you can see, we're making sort of a W, T bar fish hook shape in the snow. So in order to move from that parallel perfecter into that carving cadet category, it's really important not only to do these exercises, but we want to then take the outcome of these exercises and put them all together. So firstly, being that slow and extension move, taking away those sort of really erratic and fast abrupt movements with the outside leg, slowing it down, and then adding some edge engagement and some toppling to get the ski to, to be on its edge at the start of the turn. Now, not a lot, but just a little, just enough to make a little bit of a mark on the snow and get it some grip. And then lastly is to add some forward movements at the start of the turn, as well as some aft movements towards the end of our turn. And coupling those three movements together are what is going to change your turn shape from Z and shallow to more round and S-shaped, as well as to get you to start to carve more in the turn. Now, when you initially start doing this and you're doing it at slow speed, the performance of your turn is gonna be a little bit more skidded. Now, as you get better at this and your speed increases, what you can expect is that the ski is going to get tipped higher up on edge and you're gonna get more of that carving, gliding, slicing feeling like that Ferrari or Porsche going around the corner. Changing your skiing doesn't happen overnight. I really do hope these drills help change your ski IQ, bump it up greater than 115 and move into that carve cadet category because once you start arcing and carving turns, you're never going to want to stop.